Hey, good morning. Uh, so it's 7 a.m., pretty early. Been up since 5, but we're here today. I don't know if you can see behind me at Heathrow Airport. So we are going on our first post pandemic flight. Gonna go on a little adventure. Let's go. So we're all checked in. Um, we weren't able to check in online. We had to check in when we got to the airport. We had our temperature checked due to the severity of the original cases in the place that we're going. All times in the airport you're supposed to be wearing a face mask and for the for the bulk of it everybody's pretty compliant with it. They've got hand sanitizer everywhere, they're spacing you out and it's all pretty good. The procedures are pretty good so at the moment I feel fairly comfortable getting on the flight. Um, flying with British Airways so we'll see see how they're doing we're at terminal five the idea of terminal five you have to if you're flying with BA the majority of them you check in upstairs you go through your security security was quite a good process but obviously as you're collecting your stuff everybody's clustering together uh, but overall pretty good they had shields up they had hand sanitizer all sorts and then you get your shuttle bus to departure gates B and C so it's not too bad. So we're, I don't like these uh, paper masks. Uh, so we're gonna get on the flight in just a second and uh, see you at the destination. <laughs> so we've landed and we got through security, done everything, a couple of good things that they had when we were getting off the plane. They were letting off every few rows, but it still meant that there was a bit of a queue. Um, pretty much everybody wore a mask on the plane, so that was fine. And we've landed, you can see boats behind, in Venice. So we've got a few days here, we've got a few things planned. We're going to have a look around the city. Um, the way to get to the island from the airport, you've got two options. You can get the bus and then the train, or the bus and the bus. You can do either or, I believe, and that'll take you to one part of the island or you can get the boat. Now the boat is 15 euros single or 27 euros return. I'm not 100% sure on the bus prices, but you can look those up on the Venice website, the Venice airport website, they'll have a bunch of information on that. But uh, quite a hefty queue for the boat, that's the one we're gonna get now. And we're gonna go, it takes about an hour to go from here to San Marco, San Marco Square. And, uh, Let's enjoy the ride. I suppose to go to San Marco, we actually got off at Rialto because it was a little bit closer. Uh, so we've seen the Grand Canal, the Rialto Bridge. We just checked in at our hotels, Cadel Nobil. Um, so I'll put a video up of that so you guys can see what it's like. I'm gonna go and get some food now. We're gonna head to the Hard Rock Cafe, see if we can get the local burger from there. I um, got a voucher from them, because it's my birthday last month. They send you a voucher for buy one, get one free entrees. So I'm gonna go and use that now, hopefully, see if there's a um, chocolate love to get some chocolate um, yeah so we're gonna see if there's uh, see if we can get the local burger and uh, let's go and get some food so we're now inside the Hard Rock Cafe and we're on the top floor we look outside if you can see we've got gondolas just behind us so we've got a pretty good view um, it's not big in here and they are socially distancing the tables as well the one next to us is reserved and then the one behind Becky is quite a big gap. Um, as I said, we've got a voucher to get buy one get one free entrees, so we're going to use that. Um, when I come to these places, I do like to get the local burger. It's you come into an American English style restaurant in a foreign country, it's not ideal anyway. I like to eat the local cuisine, so try and get the local burger if you come to a hard rock. But at the moment, because of everything going on, they've got a limited menu. 
So just to show you the menu quickly. So it is just a single sheet basically. Um, the bulk of the menu is gone and on the other side is just drinks and a couple of desserts. So normally for the desserts in particular they have about five or six options. So having only two you can see how limited the menu is. Um, and to have only five starters, you know. Um, so I'm going to go for the barbecue bacon cheeseburger and I believe Becky's going to go for the twisted mac chicken and cheese. So, in place of order, they've got a good uh, thing here to say whether you want to be served or not so they don't continue to come over to your table. Um, so they've got a pretty good setup. It's not, um, it's not super packed in here. So it's pretty good. We've got a strawberry basil type lemonade thing here. And this was $4.95, I believe. So they do ask you if, it, if you want it in a souvenir glass as well. That's up to you, but the glass ends up adding like six or seven euros to it. Paper straws. One thing to know, I asked about the um, plant-based burger and it's vegetarian because the cheese isn't vegan cheese and the burger bun is coated in egg as well. So it's not, uh, it's not vegan, it's only vegetarian, but you can alter it to be vegan. So I'll just give you an idea of the food. We won't review the actual food itself because it's very standard, it's a burger. You've got barbecue sauce, cheese, onions, lettuce, and then you've got chips. You've got some barbecue sauce as well. Mac and cheese is very self-explanatory. So mac and cheese, got some bacon added on as well. Chicken and garlic bread. So it's very, very self-explanatory. One thing of note that I forgot to mention, when we came in here, this adds to the procedures really. Um, like I said, we've got socially distanced tables, but they checked our temperatures on the way in with a digital camera thermometer. So they didn't pick one of the guns to our head or anything like that, they literally just had us look into a camera, checked our temperature. 36.5 degrees C, uh, which I think is 100, just under 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so spot on, and you're allowed in. So we're going to dig into this and then get out on the road to go and see some sights. Probably won't do too much today because it's getting a little bit late in the day, but we'll have a mooch around and see see St. Mark's Square, maybe have a look in the cathedral, things like that. So uh, let's go. Finishing the Hard Rock Cafe. Love it, love it. And um, it was it was good, the burger was fantastic, it was cooked exactly as I asked for. Uh, I think the only downside of the whole thing was Becky's garlic bread that came on top of the mac and cheese was particularly dry. Um, when she bit into it, it was kind of like one of those breadsticks that you get and dip in hummus or something from Tesco's. So that's fine. So now what we're gonna, we've come out into St. Mark's Square. We're gonna go in there. We're going to go up on the balcony and uh, check out the views, see if there's a history lesson that can be had. See what they say. I don't know how much this is, we're going to go and uh, check, see what procedures they've got. Um, Becky's putting her hand up to me to say that it's five euros, so I really hope she's right and I'm not misleading you guys in any way, shape or form. Um, but it's pretty beautiful out here. Um, want to go up the tower. I think you can. There's people up there, so we're probably going to try and get up there at some point as well. Um, all around the outside here is little shops and cafes and whatnot. And then uh, all the Instagrammers are out and about. You've got this, uh, this girl taking a picture of her fella taking a picture. <laughs> just because. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's nice out here. It's it's really hot as well. You don't have to wear a mask outside in public spaces, thankfully. I think I would probably die. It's probably it's 30 it's like 33, 34 degrees with a feels like 500 degrees at the moment in the sun. So, let's go inside. 
let's go and have some fun and uh, let's go and take some selfies. So we're inside St. Mark's Basilica at the moment. The actual basilica part of it is closed, so I guess we're not really in St. Mark's Basilica. Um, we're walking up a ton of stairs at the moment. Just had our temperature checked. Um, I think it's 30, basically 37, you're not allowed in, really. Um, had to have it checked twice. We had one on the forehead. Um, Becky didn't necessarily fail that one, but whilst we were waiting in line, she moved out of it slightly, and it ended up taking the temperature behind, so that was a higher amount. As you can see, we're wearing the face masks. She was right, it is five euros to get in here. Um, there we go. So we're allowed in the museum. But the actual basilica, like I said, is closed. It's being refurbed at the moment. Um, just got this, so I'm gonna have to um, say goodbye here. I'll pull the camera back out upstairs once we're outside and bring you guys back into it then. So after a pretty steep climb, um, which you wouldn't be able to do if you've got a disability or anything like that, uh, we're upstairs at the moment. We're looking out, as you can see, on St. Mark's Square. Tower behind us. Got some horses as well. Pretty cool. Um, it was five euros to get in. I'm just going to come up here and take some, take some selfies and whatnot. Um, don't touch this banister, it's incredibly hot and you'll burn yourself. The actual basilica inside at the moment is being refurbished, so we can't really um, go in there, but we've had a look. We've had a look over the top. You can see down inside and uh, looks very grand, very gold. Um, we just go around the outside, it's very shaded around here, so we might sit down here for a couple of minutes. Tranquilla. Maybe we'll pass the temperature test first time then. Um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. For five, five euros, you can't really go wrong with this. Um, we can also look to the end. You can actually see, you can see the sea through there. That's in the tower just above me. It's so got some really good views here. Really nice, really nice place to be. They move. That's so cool. Down the other end at this point. Um, we saw the bells ringing a second ago. Got this sea, just through there. Um, that's a museum to our left. The, you got some really intricate carvings on the, on the building entrance here. And you've got the main, the main doors down the bottom. Um, this is people's favorite uh, selfie spot because you've got the sea right behind you and a handful of gondolas at the end. You've got the two pillars, one with the griffin and one looks kind of like a like a god, a goddess over there. Um, riding some kind of animal, it looks like. Kind of like a dog, sea dog. You don't have a clue. <laughs> fish dog, dog fish. <laughs> Something fish dog like. Um, and then you, yeah, so you've got the sea, and it, it, honestly, actually, 
like that'll be a beautiful photo so we're probably going to go and be basic white girls and take a couple of selfies down there as well um, the intricacy and the detail of the carving here is unreal um, Beautiful. So that's it for the Museum of Basilica now. Hope you enjoyed the views that we had overlooking St. Mark's Square and overlooking the sea and everything. Uh, we just come back downstairs now, as you can probably tell by the mass amount of stairs and the difficulty that I'm having. Um, just show you out here as well. Again, some of the intricacies. Some of the in intricacies that we've got in the mosaics. And that's where we were just a second ago. It's absolutely phenomenal though. After what feels like an hour and a half walk-in, we're on a different island in Venice at the moment, and we're gonna try our luck at Escape Venice. So, fingers crossed, Becky's actually booked this, because we didn't get a confirmation email, but we're not allowed to record inside. We're, we're gonna go in, we're gonna try and do the escape room, try and get out. I'll let you guys know what it's like once we're finished. Um, I'll let you know all the prices and everything. We've got some, uh, Leaflets here, 60 minute game, two to six people, there's two of them, there's a Viking treasure one and a Merchant of Venice, so I think we're doing the Merchant of Venice. Let's go inside, let's try and get out. Well, well, well. So we just come out of the escape room. Um, we had to be let out because we didn't escape. We did 54% of the room. Now, the room itself, when we spoke to the chap at the end, Leonardo, uh, he was saying that that's generally suitable for six people. So with there just being two of us, we kind of didn't really stand a chance. There was a lot of mental games going on all at the same time, and he didn't know whether X related to Y. So we'd be doing one thing that Potentially we had no idea as to whether we could actually complete that task or not, so we couldn't move on anyway. Um, at one point in the game, um, this isn't necessarily Leonardo, the, the, the guy that was handling the game for us, it's not necessarily his fault, um, but one of the games didn't work because the key wasn't there. So from the very start, we were missing a key, and we didn't know that because it was in it was supposed to be in this big, already open box. Had we known the key was there, probably we would have saved ourselves five, ten minutes. We don't know. Um, granted, he gave us five minutes anyway, extra time. Uh, so we're pretty frustrated now, pretty deflated after <laughs> after not escaping. And we're normally pretty good at the escape room, so what can you do? Um, come and check it out. If there's, if there's more than two of you, you know, if there's four, five, six of you, then I think it would be something that you're able to do. A couple of the games are, or a couple of the puzzles in there, once you get, once you get them and once you understand them, you can get through them really quickly. There was a couple that I just clicked straight away and we, we opened the lock. Um, but there were others that you need to do a step that's four steps in front to get something that you've already got in your hand, which is very difficult. But, saying that, escape rooms are fun. So, we like to try and wherever we go. Now we're gonna take a walk back down to kind of the St. Mark's Square area. We're gonna go and walk along the seafront. No beach, so you can't walk with feet in the sand. But we'll have a look round and try and find a nice, uh, Nice bit of pizza, 
some pasta, maybe an Aperol spritz or something like that. Um, one thing that's really cool about Venice is they've got all of these kind of masks everywhere. So let me show you this. So look. They got a little pundu on. The hippo. And these are everywhere. They've got plague masks. Very decadent. They look like uh, theatre performance. And you got some real steampunk kind of stuff down here as well. That's a big unicorn and a lion. And then the plague man, the plague doctor. It's dinner time. So one of the things in Venice, as you're walking past, just like any city that you go to, you'll have people that are essentially harassing you. They'll be, ultimately, that's the way they get business. They get it's foot traffic. They just want to grab you as you're going past. So the restaurant we've come into tonight is Titro Goldini, Al Titro Goldini. And we just, we came in here more so because the waiters, as we were going past, they didn't actually jump at us, lunge at us at all when we, when we walked past. We just had a look at the menu that all of the restaurants have menus posted on the outside. And what we've seen here, uh, the atmosphere is really nice. It's quite quiet in here, um, as you can see. But um, it's, it's reasonably priced. So you've got, the starters are a little bit more expensive. The starters are 10 to 13 euros. But then the other dishes are only about 15 euros. It goes up to about 20 for steaks and things like that, but that's to be expected. But the rest of it's reasonably priced. We're looking at pizzas for 13 euros. So, what I've gone for is a portion of gnocchi with meat sauce. We've gone for a calzone, a meat calzone. And Becky has gone for what's essentially a pork cut, a pork schnitzel uh, with french fries. Um, so, because we've got a couple of dishes, they've added us an extra table. We've got an Aperol Spritz as the uh, the staple of Venetian drinking. Chin chin. They also gave us some bread sticks and some bread. It would have been nice to get some butter, but maybe we should have asked for it. I don't know. Um, first dish we've got is our gnocchi. Now this is potato gnocchi with meat, um, like a ragu. This was 13 euros. It's cooked really well. Piping hot. The sauce is really rich, like a spaghetti bolognese ragu. And the gnocchi is like nice and fluffy as well. Very happy to order that. Nice price. And it's, uh, yeah, very soft and fluffy. Really rich ragu. Our first main course is out. And a um, little bit blown away actually for 15 euros. This is a pretty big calzone. So this comes with uh, pepperoni, ham, mushrooms, obviously the the margarita and the marinara, things like that. It's all in there, everything in there. You've got the mushrooms in there, salamis, beef ragu, you name it, it's in there. And it's huge. For 15 euros. It's like 14 pound for a pizza that's twice the size of Domino's. Let's try this. And our second main's just come, and this is, as I said before, what's effectively a pork schnitzel. This is Milan style. You can see the, the breaded pork cutlet and the potatoes. A little salad here as well. Um, I'll just give you another view of the calzone as I cut into it. Very cheesy, but I've not got to the uh, main meat yet. 
I'm gonna eat this up and let you know how it is on, once we finished. Just finished having dinner and um, that was really nice. Food was fantastic. There wasn't as much filling in the calzone as I would have liked. Not as much variety. I thought there'd be a few different fillings in the calzone, um, but it turns out it was pretty much just ham, mushrooms and cheese and lots of cheese as well. It was strings and strings of it coming out. They must use proper balls of mozzarella. The total food, the total bill, um, like I said, we got gnocchi, the calzone, the schnitzel, and we got an Aperol split, Aperol spritz to share, sorry. And the total bill was 50 euros and 50 cent. So for the, for the amount of food we got, for the service that we got as well, um, it wasn't bad. You do have to pay what's effectively a seat in charge in Venice. I believe actually in a lot of places in Italy. So ours was two euros per person and that'll cover things like your bread. Um, they gave us lemoncello at the end as well, which is extremely strong alcohol. Um, and they gave us some little shortbread biscuits. And so the service itself was absolutely fantastic. The staff member that we had was very attentive and he wasn't overbearing though. So absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend that place. The food was really good. The price was really reasonable. 50 euros with an alcoholic beverage. Two ma effectively three mains between two here. Not bad. Um, all the staff wearing masks, good social distancing. We did eat inside, and to be fair, we, we were pretty much the only ones in there. Um, so I do highly recommend it. Really, really worth it. So it's not been a super, super busy day, but we've seen a few things. And if you've enjoyed that, if you've enjoyed watching along with us, hit the thumbs up and smash the thumbs up button. It does help, it does help me out and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we post a new video. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks.